Every day I hear a story about someone that has purchased a CNC, but now they find themselves overwhelmed, frustrated, and ready to give up. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what you need and what you need to do before you jump in to CNC. I'll also be sharing the exact CNC that I recommend for the absolute beginner. I'm talking about the person that has zero prior CNC experience like I started six years ago. Before we jump into software, I just wanna note, this video is not sponsored by any of the companies that I mentioned in this video. These are my own thoughts that I have formed with my own experiences. But I will link everything that I talk about in the description below if you're interested in learning more about any of those products. All right, so software. Now I'm starting here on purpose because software is the biggest barrier to entry uh, when you, once you get your CNC. It is the biggest learning curve. And uh, so I wanted to start here. So let's break down the softwares that you'll need. Uh, so you'll need CAD and CAM software. So CAD is the computer aided design part. Think this is the, this is the artwork. This is the, the circles and the shapes and the lettering of what makes up your design. Then the CAM side. So you do CAD first and then you do the CAM side and that's the machining side, computer aided machining. And this is where you set up tool paths. So you set up your speeds and fees, you set up your depth of cut. So this is how you control your tool, how the computer controls your tool to cut out your design. My recommendation is to start with the software that the company that you purchased your CNC machine from recommends. And the reason for this is because this is the fastest and shortest way to get started. Think about it as everything is streamlined with one company. Now, CNC manufacturers recognize this. So they realize that this is a that software is a barrier to entry. So what they do is they create a bunch of resources um, to train you on a certain piece of software uh, that goes well with their machine. So you can buy a CNC machine and then go out and get another piece of software, but then you're dealing with two companies and how to integrate those together. Completely possible, don't get me wrong, um, but for the absolute beginner, everything is streamlined. Start with the software that your CNC manufacturer recommends. So my CNC journey has gone exactly this way. I started with Carbide Create, which is uh, the software for Shapeoko. I used that for three years. And then when I got my Avid CNC, I switched over to Vectric because that's what they recommend. And uh, one thing I've ob observed is Vectric a lot of times is the end destination for a lot of people. And for good reasons. It's a great company. I've had great experiences with it. And um, it is uh, a robust piece of software. Software power tip. As soon as you hit that purchase button uh, to buy your CNC machine, the next thing you should do is download the software and start getting familiar with it. Start watching their videos on it, start watching YouTube videos on it, start reading um, all of the uh, different resources that the manufacturer has put together on that software. And while you're waiting for your machine to arrive, you should be familiarizing yourself with the software because it will be the biggest hurdle that you have to jump in order to make that first project. So let's talk about bits. Uh, this is something that you will need in order to operate your CNC machine. And there are a ton of options out there. Uh, what I recommend at the very beginning is to go to Amazon and buy some cheap bits. You need a quarter inch down cut bit, you need a 60 degree V groove bit, and you need a bowl and tray bit. Those are the three bits that I recommend to get started. Buying the cheapest bits at the beginning is perfectly fine. And I recommend it because you will break a bit you will break something when you're getting started. And there's no sense in running out and grabbing a $50 um, pretty colored coating bit and breaking it in half. Uh, there's nothing that aggravates me more than seeing people go out and buy a mono bits um, that are really nice, don't get me wrong, but you don't know what you're doing yet and you break it and then you're like, oh, I'm out 50 bucks. That hurts. That's what I did. So don't do that. Um, go buy cheap bits. If you want something that's a little more high quality, then you can head to andybirdbuilds.com and I've put together a good set of uh, American made bits that has these three bits in it. Andy Bird build bits, but don't feel like you need to run out and do that at first. But there's a reason why I believe in these three bits. I use them 95% of the time. All right, so let's talk about bits a little bit and some terms that are going to be, you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear of IPM or inches per minute. 
You're gonna hear of DOC, which is depth of cut. You're gonna hear step over, which is, think about it literally um, as the bit is making passes back and forth, how far it steps over each time when it's waking its way across the material. So those are some common terms that you're gonna hear, and this is all under the CAM part of your software. Now, one really cool thing is most softwares, generalizing here, is they have a uh, tool database already loaded in with common feed rates. Now, feed rates are kind of all of those things that I just explained kind of lumped into one. So. Uh, that's a nice feature. So you don't, you're not starting from scratch. If the software doesn't, then usually the uh, bit manufacturer does. Next, let's talk about project design files. Now, project design files are the files you need to create your projects. Now, you can design your own projects in your CAD software and then set up the toolpaths. One way, um, beginners, which is a great way to get around um, to be able to start creating quicker and not have to figure out how to design projects, or maybe you see something on, um, online that you wanna make. A lot of people buy files off Etsy, um, but then a lot of companies, like either your software company or your CNC company, uh, have free projects to get you started as well. So take advantage of those free products, uh, or free projects, and learn the ropes, and then you can jump in and create your own. Another thing to note, just because you buy the CAD CAM project file doesn't mean that uh, those toolpaths are set up for your specific machine. So they could have been cutting out of a different material, they could be set up for a different tool size. So you still, there's still a learning curve here. Uh, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I just buy a CNC. Uh, I don't need to learn the software because I just buy the files. Um, and I just throw a piece of wood on there, hit go, and everything is good. Well, that's not necessarily true. In order to be successful, you need to learn what tools you have, what tools are set up in there. And so you may have to take some, you might have to do some tweaks in order um, for a file that you purchase to work successfully on your machine. Next, let's talk about material. Now, obviously you need materials to make projects out of. Some places that come to mind to uh, first get materials to use is the big box stores, so Lowe, Home, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Menards, things like that. Now these are good to get sheet goods from, MDF, plywood, things like that. They do have some hardwoods there, which are fine to use if you wanna test them out, it's completely fine, but I usually steer people away because they're very, very expensive. The next option is much better if you're gonna to go to hardwoods and that is finding a local hardwood store. If you're in a big city, look for a Rockler or Woodcraft. Even though these are still expensive, um, they're less expensive and better quality than the big box stores. All right, I've got a materials power tip for you and that is, to get on social media and look for local woodworkers. Look for woodworkers in your area and become friends with them. Say, reach out and say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I wanna do. Um, where do you buy your wood? Uh, and they'll have someone that's already established. They'll know exactly where to get it locally, whether it's a local sawmill or something like that. And then the next thing is, is say, hey, can I buy some of your cutoffs? Like, are there things that you're just throwing away um, where I could experiment with? So you've got your material. Now you need to figure out your work holding. So work holding is how you hold that material to the bed of your CNC. Now, the two ways that I hold um, material to my CNC bed is double-sided tape and or screws. I usually don't use them both at the same time, um, one or the other. I've used clamps, I've used T-Track, I've used all those different things, and I just prefer those two methods. Uh, double-sided tape, there's a lot of junk double-sided tape out there, so I'll leave a link in the description to the double-sided tape that I use. It's double-sided carpet tape that I buy at Lowe's. Haven't really been able to find it online, unfortunately, um, but I will leave that link. Maybe you can find something similar. Uh, the second way that I um, hold my material to my bed is I just use screws. And some people think that's aggressive. Some people don't like that because it leaves holes in their bed. Um, I found it is the number one way to make sure nothing is ever going to move. And I like that confidence to be able to uh, know when I hit go on my CNC, nothing, the work holding is not moving. And so I just screw 
uh, use wood screws. Um, I, one key is to pre-drill, especially if you're using hardwood, pre-drill those holes before you put screws in, because otherwise it'll, cr uh, it'll split on you, your material will split, and that's no good. So pre-drill them, and then put screws in, hit go, and you never have to worry about it moving. I like that. Dust collection is one of the most overlooked uh, aspects of using a CNC router. Uh, CNC routers are messy. Uh, they create a lot of dust, a lot of wood chips, and they can be very messy. So uh, to get started, you need a, a dust shoe. Some CNC manufacturers, um, it comes with, some of them don't. You can buy aftermarket ones. Um, just make sure it f the one you get fits uh, your CNC. Then next, you'll need a shop vac. Um, get a shop vac and you hook it, the hose up to the dust shoe and it maintains the dust. Um, shop vac, I know people only use shop vacs. And there's a lot of other ways to build them out with like a separator and all that stuff. But to get started, shop vac and a dust shoe is what you need. Now, if you wanna go one step further, I recommend buying the Harbor Freight dust collector. Uh, it's a two horsepower dust collector. That's what I use. And I actually, I have two of them. I have one on my Avid CNC and I have one um, for my Shape Ocos downstairs and my other tool, other woodworking tools. And uh, the one I have downstairs, the original one that I have is actually a hand-me-down from a Fred that used for more than five years before I got it. And I've used it for five years. I'm not exaggerating, this Harbor Freight dust collector has been going for more than 10 years. So last but definitely not least is machine, right? We've talked about everything else that you need uh, and other than the machine itself. And the reason I saved this for last, it was very intentional, is because usually that's where people start. They're like, oh, I just need a machine and they forget about all this other stuff. But the other reason I saved it for last is because the machine I actually recommend starting with comes with everything that we talked about other than the dust collection and material. So Andy, what machine do you recommend for the absolute beginner uh, with no prior experience? And that is the Shapeoko. Now I know there's some keyboard warriors out there right now saying, this machine and this machine and this machine. It's, there's some strong opinions out there, but based on my experiences uh, and uh, where I started and how I've seen different, uh, how I see the market, there is no better place to start than a Shapeoko CNC. And here's why, I've already hinted at it, but it's because it comes with everything you need. It's streamlined. The goal when buying a CNC is to make cool projects. So the company that does that the best, that gets you from absolute beginner to making projects on a CNC is Carbide 3D, that's the name of the company, and their CNC machine, uh, the Shapeoko. They've built an amazing ecosystem um, to enable you to get creating as fast and as fun as possible. So looking at Shapeoko's website at the time of making this video, the least expensive machine that you can purchase is the uh, Shapeoko 4 in their, uh, ba their smallest model, which is $1,700. It's a small machine, but that is an absolute bargain for what you get. So you get everything that we talked about. You just have to supply a computer, which this will be someone's argument, I know in the comments, is that you have to have a laptop. Well. You have to have a laptop for your design, your CAD cam work anyways. So it's really not, you're not adding anything else. You're gonna need that if you buy another machine as well. So your laptop ser serves as your controller. So literally the only other decision that you'll have to make is that that CNC does not come with the router or spindle. So you just have to choose, do you want a router or do you want a spindle? Most people just start with a router on this size machine, and that's like less than 100 bucks. So for about $2,000, you're gonna get everything. You're not gonna have to make any more decisions. You're not gonna have to source software. You're not gonna have to source a drag chain. You're not gonna have to source a, a, a work bed, a cutting table, that comes with the hybrid table. So that is why I say Shapeoko is the best place to start for absolute beginners, because it streamlines it, and at the end of the day, you just wanna make things and Shapeoko, there's no better than Shapeoko. On top of all the stuff I've already, I've already talked about, one thing that separates um, Shapeoko from the rest of the, the beginner market is their 30-day mistakes on us. 
Shapeoko will send you the parts for free on them for 30 days. So what this does is it takes the fear of screwing something big up out for 30 days. That's where you, that's where you're learning. And so that's why I'm saying no one has invested more into the CNC beginner and their success than Shapeoko has. So again, this video is not sponsored by any of these companies mentioned in this video. Uh, this is all my own opinion and my opinion that I formed based on my experiences. So I will leave links to everything that I talked about in the description below if you wanna learn more. So this isn't to intimidate anybody from getting into CNC. Uh, this is to draw a clear picture and to set the expectation of like, okay, this is what I expect. Uh, because the last thing I want, I talk about making money with CNC, but the last thing I want is I do not want people frustrated. They get into CNC and then they run into all these different barriers that they did not see coming. And like, oh, I need this and oh, I need this. And oh, like, no, that's not enjoyable for anybody. So I hope I set the stage clearly to where the expectations um, are realistic and you can get into CNC and enjoy it uh, fully. If there's something that I didn't cover in this video that you have a question on, be sure to leave it in the description below and I will try to answer them all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.